Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eaglin, and this is Java for Beginners, and we're really going to start right there at Java for Beginners. So the only thing that uh, I've done so far that you would need to follow is I've gone out and I've installed the Java JDK, and I've installed the NetBeans IDE, which you can actually see right here. You need an IDE to work with Java, and you can download the Java development kit um, from the Oracle website. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new project and the new project will be a Java application and we will call this Java application um, um, Java application 3 is fine and we're going to go ahead and say done. Now it's going to go ahead and create our project and it's going to set up everything that we need to do to create our Java project. Now what I'm going to do as we go along is I'm going to explain to me what explain to you what we're doing. So Java is a object-oriented programming language and it works much like C does, but let's look at what you have to have to start. First, I have to have a declaration of a class. Okay. Now, we're going to talk a little bit later about what this is, but we have to first declare that we have a class. And the class that we're declaring is the same as the, the class that I said is our project, Java Application 3. Public class Java Application 3 with an open bracket and a closed bracket. Now inside that class I can create two things, properties and methods, because all classes can have properties and methods. Just remember that classes can have properties and methods. You'll learn more about what properties and methods are later on. Just remember that they can have properties and methods. And by default we've got this property, this, I'm sorry, this method called main. Well, a lot of words for that property, for that, that method called main, because you've got public and static and void. What does all this mean? Well, let's just go with some of the basics. I'm going to talk about what public and void means. Static's going to kind of get us down a little bit more advanced stuff than what we're going to talk about, but right now we can talk about public because public's here and it's here. Okay, well, public just means it's available to everything else that you're programming. So, in other words, if you program bunches of other projects or bunches of other classes or a bunch of other methods, Okay, they can only see things that are public. So when you say the word public, you're saying everybody else can see you. Void means that it doesn't return anything. Okay, this is a method. It's also what you might call a function. It's a bunch of code that can't all bundled together that may or may not return something. We now know that it may or may not return something because it's got the name void, which tells you that it doesn't return anything. And the name of this function or method, I'm going to use the right terminology from here on out. This is a method that is a member of this class. This is a method that is a member of this class. The class's name is Java application. The method's name is main. Now, we got some other stuff here. String bracket bracket args. Args. They're not pirates. That's a, that what you're saying here is that I'm going to pass into this method some strings. Okay, well, some strings. How do we mean some strings? Well, by saying string bracket bracket, what I'm actually saying is I'm going to pass an array of strings. Well, what is that? It's just more than one string. And they're going to be called args. Well, now I've got another thing that's kind of interesting here. We know that we're going to this that this thing that string bracket bracket means I'm going to pass more than one. I'm going to pass a bunch of these things that are strings. And if you remember, strings are just pieces of text. But that's what that defines what you're going to pass. They're going to be strings. But the names of the strings that are going to get passed to this this method are the args. That's the name of it. Well, you know what? None of that matters for this example at all. Okay, what's going to matter is the only thing that I'm going to do in my application is I'm going to output some stuff. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. So how do I output? And outputting is lots of ways to output, but the output that we're going to do today is printing. Woohoo! Printing is a great thing. So I need an object that will print. Well, how do I know that I need an object that will print? Because I'm in Java, and everything in object is, Java, is objects. So I have to have an object that's capable of printing. Darn, I need to know where I can find an object capable of printing. Well, that's really not that hard. The system object, okay, which is built in, has this beautiful capability of output and input too while you're looking at that. So if I type the word system and then dot, I get this wonderful thing here that says, ooh, I've got methods 
and properties. Well, guess what? These, air, in, and out, are properties. And everything else that's here is a method. Okay, now, this is that. these are actually class methods, but you know what? Don't worry about that right now. That's, again, above and beyond the scope. But just remember, sometime later, we're going to talk about class methods or methods that you have to actually have an instantiated object to use. Ugh, now I'm using all these funky terms, instantiated objects. Don't worry about it yet. Okay, we're going to worry about this object, the system object, which has these three properties. And of these three properties, I'm going to use the one called out because it's going to let me print stuff. When I say system.out, I'm saying I have an object that is a property of the system object. Now, wait, an object that's a property of the system object? Yes, objects can contain other objects. And the out is one of the objects contained by system. Well, if the system has an object that is a property of it that it can actually have inside of itself, that object must have some class, something that defines what it is. And if you look at this, we know what it is. It's a print stream. If you wanted to know what the end was, it would be an input stream. So a print stream is a type, is a class, okay? And the out is an instantiation of that class that lives inside of system. So in other words, system has a property called out. Out is a print stream, and it can do stuff. So let's type the word out, and now hit the dot again. And voila, we've got all these other things that just pop up automatically, and these are all properties of the print stream that is a property of system. So these are all methods of, because actually all of these are methods, but these are all methods of the print stream object, which is also called out inside of the system object. Whoa. I know your head is just swimming crazily right now, but think about it. It's not that hard. I got an object called system. It has a property called out, and out happens to be a print stream. It's kind of like me saying, I own a car. My car is a Toyota. Okay, well, my Toyota is my Toyota. So I have a car that is an object that is a property of me that is my Toyota. Okay, what kind of class is it? What kind of object it is it? Well, it's a car. I just said it was a car. It's mine. I am system. I have a car. It's that. Okay, you're saying the exact same thing. Just think of this as terms of, this is just plain old simple English, but for computers. I got an object called system. It's built into the language. It has a property called out. That out is a print stream. This print stream has a bunch of methods. What method do I want? Well, you know, by now, all I really want to do is print. So let's choose that one, print, right there, print. And then look, oh, look, it's got now a whole bunch of other stuff comes up here. Well, that's because you can print lots of different things. You can print booleans and characters and integers and floats and doubles and strings and, okay, yeah, you can print a lot of stuff. Well, you know what we're going to do right now? We're going to print a string. The easiest way to print a string, throw that baby right here in a bunch of quotes and say, my name is Ron Eaglin. Okay? And voila, I got a program. Now, when I go up here and hit this little green run button, it's going to run the program. Java, by default, will always run some function as the function it runs when it starts. And by default, that function is function main inside of your, inside of your public class, which is, the, which is the base class. Right now, I only got one, so it only has one choice. So I go ahead and hit this button. And it's going to try to build the thing, build, 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 run, and voila. And I got down here at the bottom, my name is Ron Eaglin, build successful, total time two seconds. But look at this, this build successful is on the same line. I wanted my name to have its own line. Let's go back up. Guess what? If I had looked a little bit deeper in there, I would have noticed that print also had print ln, which is by, whoops, print ln, it's lowercase. And that will print a line. Let's run this again and see what happens. Okay, boom. Ah, look, this is beautiful. My name is Ron England. And guess what? The line went down to the next line for build successful. Great. I can do stuff now. I got output under control. 
My head might be swimming with classes and instantiations and main functions and static and void. That stuff is not that hard. It isn't. Get over it. It really is not. Okay? Public, anybody can see it. Static, don't worry about it right now. Void, it doesn't return anything. Okay? If I replace void with the word int, it's going to have to return an integer. Okay? I'm not going to do that. Go to the next line here. Let's try something else here. Mm, I want to print out, let's declare a variable. Um, variable will be, ha, 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 I want an integer. Int is an integer. Age equals, okay, I'm going to be 54, because that's actually how old I am right now. I know, these guys are looking at programming going, damn, he's old. Okay, no, I'm not. Get over it. System dot out. Now, I want to print this age. Okay, well, let's see what I can do here. Let's try this print line again. P R I N T L. And look, it even comes up and tells you what your options are. Print line. Okay, my age is plus age. I'm not going to add age to my the, the text my age is. I'm just going to hope that it's smart enough to convert age to a string for output. Huh. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Okay, let's find out. You know what? Sometimes it's better just to hit that button and look and see what happens. Well, look, it worked. Okay, my name is Ron England. My age is 54. It worked. Okay, well, <laughs> that's even great. You know what? I want to... I want to print something that has to be formatted. Um, let's see. I'm going to pull out my wallet. I'm going to look in my wallet. I have in my wallet $7. Okay. Well, that's going to be my next one. Amount. Okay. Oh, I can't just type amount. I have to say what it is. Syntax. Syntax in Java. Tell what you're going to create. Double. A double is a floating point number. Okay, I got to give it a name, money. Okay, and I got to give it a value. I don't actually have to give it a value, but I'm going to give it a value, 7.00. Well, you know what, 7.00 is the same as seven. Hmm, but you know what? When I want it to print out, I want it to be 7.00 because it's dollars. I can probably do that. System.out.print. Now, if I start scrolling through here, oh look, print F. Hmm, let's see. That printf might be useful to me because it might have something called a format string. How do you know that? Well, you know how you know that? I just told you. That's how you know it. All right, so let's put the format in here. I have dollar. Okay, I have dollar. Okay, hoo hoo. Magic code. Percent. Point two. Magic code. Okay, and now I'm going to put in here args. Money. Money is the name of the variable that I said what I had, okay? Hmm, I have dollar percent point two. That percent is a magic code. It tells you to put some sort of formatted something there. Well, what does that format mean? It says it means I want to put a number there and I want to have two decimal places after the period. That's what it means. Now, Let's go ahead and put that semicolon at the end, like most of you are going to forget to do when you're writing code, because then it's going to throw an exception, and you're going to go, oh my god, it didn't work, but guess what? Get over it. All you got to do is remember to put your semicolons at the end, and that won't happen to you. Let's hit that build baby up there at the top, and let's see what happens. Oh my god. This is the most terrible thing in the world. I got errors. <laughs> Well, let's look and see. Hmm, all this stuff here. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and go, what could this possibly mean? Well, there's a bunch of stuff that you can click on. Exception and thread, main. Okay, here's what you do. You look at it and you say, what exactly could this be? Unknown format conversion exception. Point. Okay, that tells me it doesn't like this. It didn't like it. Okay. Well, 
after you get done panicking and banging your head against the computer for a few whiles, for a little bit, what do you do? Well, here's what I do. Most of the time when I see something like this, I go, help me. I take that piece of stuff and I copy it. And then I go over here to my Google. Yes, Google is a programmer's paradise for lots of stuff like that. And I throw that thing up into that and I hit enter. Whoops, now Google's gotten really, really big. Okay. What do we what does this mean? Hmm. Okay, now I get to this website called Stack Overflow. And you know what? I chose Stack Overflow because guess what? Stack Overflow is a great place to go for stuff like this. Okay, it gives you all sorts of things that you can they can do to fix it. It's a programmer's site. People ask questions and then people answer those questions and people rank the questions and they rank the answers. This is really, really cool. Okay, so this person had the same problem I had. They went bump, 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 system out print, FM, percent S, percent 13 S, percent slash N. Those all have meanings, but, and then they got the, oh, here comes the problem here. What did I do wrong? Well, this person says, you got bugs. Okay, well, what are those, what are these bugs? Okay, what's wrong with is the percent slash backslash N in the first line. Notice that the percent is a special character. Okay, I'm reading this out to you. Okay, it's telling you something about it. Okay, now what they were saying is that you wanted to actually have this percent sign. Well, you know what? This one isn't helping us a whole lot because, well, his problem was is that he had a percent backslash n. Whoa, let's get that out of the way. I don't have a percent backslash n. I got a percent point two. Now I could go. Well, let's try this zero point two. Maybe that'll work. Okay, it might not. It might. Okay, again, it's not going to hurt you to try stuff. You throw the thing up there again and you say, well, I got the same thing, but this time the conversion was at the zero. Okay, it's not liking my percent. It's a percent, uh, I, it, but you know, my teacher told me this would work and I'm going over here and look, it's got this example here and it's got percent ends in it and um, okay, I don't get it. What's going on? Well, we can solve this, okay? Well, let's first go, maybe it's the dollar sign. This is, this is your trial and error. You gotta try stuff, okay? If you just knew how to do it, it wouldn't be a problem here. You gotta try things. Let's take the dollar sign out, see what happens, okay? Maybe the dollar sign's causing a problem. No, the dollar sign's not causing the problem. I'm still getting this issue here. I don't get it with the percent zero two. I don't get it with the point two. Okay, this percent seems to be the whole big problem here, okay? I put that percent in and I try it and it doesn't work. And then I take the percent out and I try it and it does work, but I don't get the decimal places that I want. It just says I have point two, and oh, look what else it did. It put that build successful back where I didn't want it. Now, that I will show you how to solve right now. Backslash, slash n. Okay, let's just run this so you can see what happens here. That slash n is magical. It moves the stuff. Ooh, it didn't move it to the next line. I now have a clue. Okay, because I was looking over here and it said this would go ahead and move stuff to the next line, but you know what? Ah, here we go. Slash in, try backslash in. Okay, again, error, look at it, solve. Okay, and voila, now it goes down to the next one, but now I'm back to that same problem that I had before. I am not getting 0. Point, I'm getting 0. 0.2. I don't want 0. 0.2, I want the money. Okay, so how do I get that? Aha. Okay, and I'm starting to flash back and forth, but that's life. Um, it is the day before Halloween, so this is happening. Okay, so what do you do here? Well, what you do is you come over here and look at a set of specifications for the format string. Yes, Java format string specifications, because the problem is in the magic formula. That magic formula, 0.2f, Okay, a percent point two. Okay, you need the right one. And you know what? If you don't put the right one, it doesn't work. So guess what? You gotta look at some of these different format specifiers. It's just what you gotta do. 
Okay, now the correct format specifier to get this the way that I want it to look is percent 01.2F. That's the magic formula, magic string. And how do I know that? Well, I read the format specifiers. Okay, I looked at what I needed to do and then I looked at some examples of how to do it. Okay, that's important. So when I throw these different things in here, these little errors that I might have tossed into this stuff, is to show you not only how do you get what you want, how do you figure out how to get what you want. Okay, and that is it for this lecture. Okay, at the end of this lecture, you should be able to use system, be able to use out.println and print and printf. Okay, those are all things that you should be able to do. You should be able to look and see how the IntelliSense and understand what it's doing. You should be able to declare variables. You should understand that the main function of this class is the one that gets called by default when you build the Java project and run it. You should be able to at least know a little bit about what a class is and what a method is and what a property is. You haven't gotten to the details, but you did something. You're ready. Write some code. Go out there and get it done. Java is not that scary. Go to it. Have fun. And I'll stop flashing at you.